past eight here on Kiwi. Ready when my breakfast. Back for 2012 on the show. Russell Norman, co-leader of the Greens with us. Good morning, Russell. Good morning, Wemo. Morning, yes. And, um, and of course, back in the debating chamber, all in the thick of it. Um, and, of course, you have all the tools that you need to be able to do your job there at Parliament, don't you, personally? Yeah, and I don't have to... They don't come out of my personal budget. They're provided by Parliament. <laughs> Parliament Parliamentary like Services. Systems. Of course, we're alluding to um, Mojo Mathers, uh, Green Party um, MP, the first deaf um, MP in Parliament, and uh, she's been told that she has to pay for her own um, uh, transcribing services or technology that will enable her to understand what's going on in Parliament. Yeah, the, the Speaker's made a ruling that um, they're willing to pay for some of the technology that Mojo needs in order to follow proceedings in Parliament, um, but they're not willing to pay for the staff to operate the technology. Uh, so they're happy to pay for all of us people who can hear, um, pay for all the staff for us, but they're not willing to pay for it for Mojo, who uh, has a, a profound hearing impairment. So who does the buck, uh, where does the buck stop here? Is it with um, the Speaker, Lockwood Smith? Yeah, I mean, you know, Lockwood's just made a ruling. Um, it's entirely within his power to pay for this, but he just, for some reason, has decided not to. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll keep pushing on it because, you know, this is a fundamental right. I mean, you know, we could pay for it out of the Mojo budget or the Green Party budget, but it doesn't No other MP has to do that. Why should Mojo? Yesterday, uh, Lockwood seemed to be making a distinction between types of disabilities. Um, you know, he was saying it's OK, we could provide wheelchair access, but we can't provide uh, this equipment and staff. Well, it's, it's even, he's even splitting more hairs than that. So he's kind of saying he'll pay for capital um, changes or, or equipment. So he, is, he has paid for some equipment for Mojo. Yeah. Um, or being willing to, but it's the it's the labour that he's not willing to pay for. Um, so the you know the people who would do the note taking, um, and he said you know she's got a that's what her support staff are for. But of course you know all MPs get these support staff, and they're not to actually enable us to participate in the debate in the chamber. Yeah. Um, you know, Mojo obviously outside of the outside of the, um, the chamber and outside of select committees. You know, we Mojo and the Green Party um, provide all sorts of support to make sure that Mojo can participate in Green Party internal meetings and so forth. Yeah. Um, but in the chamber, um, we think that that's a responsibility of the whole Parliament. So, what what sort of cost are we looking at now? Is this more than thirty thousand? We're probably looking twenty to thirty thousand a year um, to pay for it. The, for, for, for staff. The, for the staff, yeah. Oh, that's cheap. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's it's it. You know, it's a relatively small amount of money, um, but it's the principle. I mean, I'm, I'm know, just thinking. The, about, sorry, I'm just thinking about the wage there. That that doesn't seem like a, um, enough to do that job. Uh, so it's probably what they're saying. What you know, what we've gone out and had a look at it. And she probably needs about a thousand hours a year of transcribing right. support, um, of note taking support. Um, so if you say that's twenty to thirty bucks an hour, then that's what you're looking at. Okay, so it's not it's not a full time job. No, okay. no, no. Okay, right. But I mean, the bigger issue is, um, is we, what we want to do is actually make this a step towards live captioning. Um, so, you know, you have live captioning of Parliament yeah. so that there's, you know, because there's hundreds of thousands of people in New Zealand who are hearing impaired. Yeah. And if they so wish, they might want to follow Parliament. I mean, obviously they may not. But if they did, then um, they should be able to, and currently they can't. Uh, so if we have live captioning, which is where we, we want to take this thing, um, then it means that, you know, upwards of maybe 700,000 New Zealanders who are hearing impaired will be able to follow Parliament much more easily. Well, indeed. And and uh, there are other examples of this elsewhere in the world? Yeah, there are other Parliaments have been adapting themselves to the modern world. Um, so whether it's with sign or whether it's with captioning, Captioning, you know, is probably better in the sense that it does, you know, you don't have to know how to read signs. So can yeah. all those people who have been to too many rock concerts in their youth and start to lose their hearing in their old age can, um, can, can actually follow it. Can that be done in real time? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's quite interesting what they do is, oh, anyway, so, it's, you know, it's voice recognition software, but they have to... It has to. They, the voice recognition can't recognise everyone in Parliament no. because it's a bit of a maelstrom. So what they do is get a person to basically repeat what's being said in Parliament to the computer. The computer instantaneously turns oh. it into text. Wow, what a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what a job, hey. Imagine having to repeat all of our bloody words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially late into the night. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, um, but, but 
also, isn't there someone down there in front of the speaker who's like banging away on a typewriter, <laughs> or it looks like a typewriter, I guess it's a computer these days, but isn't there someone doing that as well? Yeah, so there's Hansard, which is the official record. Um, and but that kind of takes a little bit of time because they have to that they they basically make sure it's accurate. So it's right. not not real time. So it's not much use to Mojo in the debating chamber because okay. it's not real time, and that's the difference. And basically, you know, it means that we will have probably Hansard, which will be the you know the totally accurate record, and then you'll have live captioning, which will be the kind of mostly accurate record, but won't be necessarily the record you'd use in a court later. You know. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, okay. Well, it's, we'll, well, I guess we'll see what happens with that. Um, I, wh- wh- where's public opinion on this? I mean, not that public opinion should really matter in, in this, but where, where do you think it's at? Well, I, I think that the world's moved about disabilities. Um, so, you know, we used to say disabled people need to be stuffed in a cupboard and not heard or seen. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I even remember like maybe 20 years ago, you just didn't see, for example, people in wheelchairs much. Um, and that's all changed, and the disabled community's really kind of pushed through and said, no, we've got a right to be seen, we've got a right to try to live, you know, as normal lives as possible, um, as you know, and do everything that we can. Um, and so I, I think the mm. world's moved, and I don't think mm. people like the idea that someone who's deaf um, can't participate in Parliament because the Speaker won't fork over 30 grand a year. Hey, something we were covering earlier on this morning uh, was this news yesterday that the the, 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 the Prime Minister let loose that uh, it would cost $1 billion for the IRD computer upgrade. Um, have you heard about this? Yeah, yeah, we talked about it last week in the Finance and Expenditure Committee. Um, a concern this morning from Don Christie from the NZ Rise uh, um, group that... Um, it helps promote the local IT industry. Concern that that $1 billion is going to be used to pay uh, perhaps overseas corporations, big corporations for off-the-shelf solutions and then ongoing licence fees. They would like to see you know, that money be spent locally like it was in the 80s. Um, they built up this, the Jade software, which is currently what the IRD use. Um, they'd like to see it you know, perhaps open source as well. What are your thoughts I mean, I agree with them. I think it's a, it's a really good point. Uh, you know, this this is going to be one of the biggest IT um, contracts in the country, yeah. um, upgrades. It is spread over, I think they're planning to spread it over a decade, but even so, it's going to be a huge project. Uh, and, you know, engaging local firms and making sure it's open source, I think, would help a lot um, in, you know, in terms of making sure that we do the project well yeah. and also making sure we provide some support to the local industry and we don't just end up adding to our current account deficit where we pay licensing fees forever. Because I guess this is one we're going to have to keep on top of because costs can um, blow out. And there was the example of the National Health Service in Britain uh, where they spent £12 billion and then got nothing at the end of it. They had to pull the plug because it was just getting so expensive. (laughs) IT, these kind of IT projects, um, I've been involved in some too, man, they can really go badly wrong. Um, so yeah, so hopefully we've got better management of them than than we did a decade ago, um, because you know we're learning about how to manage them properly. But they are hard. Concern though that um, that people in areas of decision making, perhaps at the IRD or or the IT departments um, in government, uh, have previously had jobs at some of these big companies from overseas, and it's just a self perpetuating circle. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know whether that's true or not, but, I mean, it's certainly true that um, there's something which says let's the easy thing is we just go to the international yeah. consultants and take their advice. Mm. Um, and that way, if anyone gives us grief about it later, like if the project goes belly up, um, we can say, oh, we went to the international experts and they told us to do X, so yeah. therefore it's not our fault. Yeah. So at some level it's about ass covering as well because these projects are so risky. Yeah. Indeed, Russell, hey, good to have you back on the show and we'll talk to you next week. Cool, thanks very much. Russell Norman, co-leader of the...